Hey, I've got a riddle for you. What does salt, a dollar bill, and faith have in common? Salt, a dollar bill, and faith. It's a very simple answer. Size doesn't matter. In this episode of the Midweek Refill, we're going to be talking about the parable of the mustard seed. And we're going to see today the fact that when it comes to your faith, even if you have just a smidgen the size of a mustard seed, size doesn't matter, but faith does. I'm Bishop Lippman. You're watching the Midweek Refill. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop Littman, your host, and I'm always excited to share these teachings with you. As you know, for this month, we're in a mini-series based on the parables of Jesus from the Gospels, and we're only looking at just a few of the parables. Of course, a parable is a heavenly story that shares truths that could be related with earthly tools. So it's really um, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And I'm glad to share this series with you. And this week, we have a little bit of a controversial subject, and it's called Size Doesn't Matter. We're looking at the parable of the mustard seed. And again, welcome to this week's episode. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and don't forget the down in the description box below you will find a free PDF that goes along with this teaching. So again, hello, welcome to our Bible study today as we explore the incredible parable of the mustard seed. And it's found in the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. And of course, this is the third of our series in the parables that Jesus spoke in the Gospel of Mark chapter number four. So our text for this week is Mark 4, verse 30 through verse 32. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. Now, my friends, this parable spoken directly by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is absolutely brimming with life-transforming insights into the nature of faith and the magnificent growth of God's kingdom. So, as we delve into these verses together, I want you to get ready to discover some timeless truths that have the power to provide profoundly impact your spiritual journey, as well as unlocking new levels of growth and fulfillment in your very, very life. Now, let me tell you, when Jesus spoke, he didn't just utter words. He released divine revelations that have the potential to revolutionize our lives. Well, guess what? In this parable, Jesus masterfully uses the imagery of a mustard seed, a tiny, seemingly insignificant seed to convey the powerful truths about the incredible potential that is inherent within even the smallest measure of faith. Can you imagine that? Your faith, no matter how small it may seem, literally has the potential to grow into something that is truly remarkable, my friends. And that is such a profound revelation that it doesn't take a whole lot of faith. Size really doesn't matter as it relates to faith. But what does matter is that you actually have faith of any size. And here's the thing about it. Jesus goes on to reveal the breathtaking growth and expansion of God's kingdom through this simple yet highly profound illustration of the mustard seed. And just like the mustard seed, God's kingdom starts out small, barely noticeable to the naked eye, 
but under the loving care and nurturing hand of our Heavenly Father, it grows into something majestic, something awe-inspiring, providing shelter and sustenance for all who seek refuge in it. And isn't that wonderful news? Well, now, as we journey through this parable together, I want you to open your heart wide and prepare to receive the life-changing truths that God has in store for you. And let's not just read these words, but let's actually allow them to penetrate deep into our souls and transform us from the inside out. Because my friend, when we grasp the incredible power of faith and the unstoppable growth of God's kingdom, there's nothing that can stand in the way of abundant life that God has planned for every single one of us, including you as well. So let's talk about the background of this story. Now, let me tell you something incredible about our Lord Jesus Christ. He had this amazing way of taking everyday ordinary things and infusing them with profound spiritual meaning. And that's exactly what he did in the parable of the mustard seed, my friends. Picture this, Jesus, surrounded by a crowd eager to hear his teachings, begins to paint a vivid picture using a simple mustard seed. A seed so tiny, so inconsequential, that it was easily overlooked by many. But oh, what a powerful message Jesus had hidden within that tiny seed. You see, Jesus wasn't just talking about gardening tips. He was revealing deep truths about the kingdom of God. Can you believe it? The mustard seed, though minuscule in size, had this incredible potential to grow into a large, sturdy plant providing shade and shelter for birds. And in that analogy, Jesus was showing us that even the smallest amount of faith, no matter how insignificant it may seem, has the power to grow into something that is truly magnificent. Now, let me ask you something, friend. Have you ever felt like your faith was small? Like it couldn't possibly make a difference in the grand scheme of things? Well, I've got news for you. Jesus wants you to know that even a tiny seed of faith, when it is in fact planted in the fertile soil of your heart, has the potential to produce a harvest beyond your wildest dreams. That's right. Your faith may start small, but under the loving care of our Heavenly Father, it has the power to grow into something beautiful and something that is absolutely life-changing. So don't you dare underestimate the power of your faith, my friend. God has in fact placed within you a mustard seed of faith that has the potential to move mountains, to bring miracles your way, and to transform your very life. All it takes is a willingness to trust God and step out in faith, believing that he will do exceeding and abundantly above all you could ask or think. That's Ephesians 3 and 20, one of my favorite passages of scripture. Take action on your faith. Believe God Even if it's a little bit of faith, even if you find yourself afraid or scared, go ahead and believe God afraid. Believe God scared. And eventually, your faith is going to outweigh your fear. And when you plant that seed of faith in your life and begin to believe God and expect God to do something supernatural in your career, in your family, in your faith, in your physical, even in your finances, watch. God will do the impossible in your life. And I just want to stop here and encourage you that you need to know that your best days are still ahead of you, my friend. I don't care what you've dealt with. Listen, your best days are not behind you. 
Your best days are, in fact, ahead of you. So let's talk about the relevance that this whole concept of the parable of the mustard seed would have had to Jesus' audience at that time. Because I want to really paint a vivid picture here for you of the scene when Jesus spoke these words to his original audience. Picture a crowd of eager Jewish listeners. Their hearts are hungry for truth and understanding. And as Jesus began to speak, their ears began to perk up, ready to receive the wisdom that he had to impart. But what they heard that day was unlike anything they had expected. You see, the people of Jesus's time had certain expectations about the kingdom of God. They envisioned a kingdom that was filled with splendor and majesty and mysticism even. A kingdom that would come with power and dominance, overthrowing the Roman government and all oppressors, and therefore ushering in a new prosperity for the people. But oh, how Jesus has a way of turning our expectations upside down, inside out, and wrong side to the right side. And that's what he does with the parable of the mustard seed. You see, instead of describing a kingdom of grandeur and power, Jesus actually revealed a kingdom that begins humbly, almost without being able to be recognized, like a small seed planted in the ground. Can you imagine the shock and the disbelief this must have had as it washed over the ears of the listeners? as they heard these words coming from Jesus. But friends, listen, Jesus wasn't just challenging their perceptions. He was inviting them to embrace a new way of thinking about the kingdom of God. He was showing them that true greatness doesn't come from outward displays of power, outward displays of prestige, but from the quiet, steady growth of faith in the human heart. That's where true growth comes from. And oh, what a beautiful picture Jesus painted for his listeners that day. For that day, he showed them, and today, he's still showing us that this humble kingdom, though small at first, has the power to grow exponentially. You know, the people of the Bible days had no clue that you and I would even exist. They expected Jesus to be all for themselves and to even return like within the next few months or so. So that is just a a very ocular reminder of the exponential growth that happened from the seed of Jesus Christ being planted in this world. And the kingdom of God is a place where we can find refuge. It's a kingdom of love. It's a kingdom of grace. It's a kingdom of mercy. It's a kingdom that welcomes all who come with open arms. So my friend, if you've ever found yourself longing for a kingdom of grandeur and power, I want to encourage you to shift your perspective today and embrace the humble beginnings of God's kingdom within you knowing that it holds with it the potential for unimaginable growth and transformation. Open your heart to receive the blessings that God has in store for you and watch as God unfolds his kingdom in your life in ways you never even dreamed imaginable. So let's talk about how we can apply this parable of the mustard seed as modern everyday Christians today. Number one, we must put our faith in action. We must put our faith in action. Now, let me tell you something amazing about the power of your faith. Just like the mustard seed grows into a towering plant, your faith has the incredible potential 
to flourish and thrive beyond your wildest imagination. Can you believe that? The same faith that starts as a tiny seed in your heart has the power to grow into something truly magnificent, touching not only just your life, but also the lives of everyone around you. Now, I know it may seem hard to believe at times. You may look at your faith and think, how could something so small make a difference in the world? But let me remind you, my friends, that God specializes in taking the small and making it great. He loves to take the seemingly insignificant and use it to bring about incredible transformation and incredible blessings. So don't you dare underestimate the power of your faith, my friends. Every time you take a step of faith, every time you choose to trust God in the midst of uncertainty, you are planting a seed that has the potential to grow into something extraordinary. And as your faith blossoms, as your faith flourishes, it will not only bring blessings and abundance into your own life, but it will also overflow into the lives of those around you, touching them in a way that they nor you ever thought possible. So I want to challenge you and encourage you. Go ahead, my friend. Water the seed of faith that's in your heart. Cultivate it with prayer, with praise, and with a steadfast belief in God's promises. But here's a second principle you need to see as to how you and I can use this mustard seed parable today. And that is perseverance, perseverance. So let me share with you a profound truth about the growth of your faith, my friends. Just like the mustard seed's journey from tiny to a towering plant, our own faith journey often unfolds gradually, requiring patience and trust in God's perfect timing. You see, God operates on a different timetable than we do. His ways are higher than our, our ways, Isaiah said, and his timing is always perfect. Even when it seems like he's late, his timing is always perfect. So even when it feels like nothing is happening, even when it seems like your prayers are going unanswered, know that God is at work behind the scenes, orchestrating every detail according to his divine plan. By the way, when you go to a play, a drama, a theatrical production, you've never gone up in between scenes when the lights were out to say, hey, what's going on behind the scene, behind the curtain? You know why? You would have been escorted out of there. Why is it that we trust human beings in dark places, yet we don't trust the light of the world to give us the next scene and to know that he knows how to write the script of our lives? I love what Hebrews says. He is the author and the finisher of our faith, which means this. If it's not good, it's not over because all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. But my friend, I want to encourage you to embrace the season of waiting in your faith journey. It is actually those moments of waiting that God is shaping and molding you into the person he created you to be. So don't get discouraged if things aren't happening as quickly as you like. Instead, lean into God's timing and trust that he has something incredible in store for you. Keep praying, keep believing, keep trusting in his faithfulness. And before you know it, you look back and see how far you've come. God has amazing things in store for you. There's a powerful third principle we can extract from this parable of the mustard seed as modern day believers. And that's number three, the impact of small acts. Hey, I like that. That rhymes. Let me say it one more time. The impact of small acts. I like that. You like that? <laughs> Let me tell you something about 
the extraordinary impact that your faith can have and your obedience can have when you follow God's plan. Even the smallest, most seemingly insignificant acts of faith and obedience have the power to have a ripple effect in your life and create far-reaching consequences in God's kingdom. You see, God delights in using the ordinary and the mundane to accomplish his extraordinary purposes. He loves to take the little acts of faithfulness that we do that may seem so small, so insignificant to us, yet he can use them to bring about incredible transformation and wonderful blessings in your life. So don't you dare underestimate the power of your actions for the kingdom of God, whether it's offering a word of encouragement to a friend in need, lending a helping hand to a neighbor, or simply choosing to forgive someone who has wronged you. Every act of faith, every act of obedience matters to God. And here's the thing, you may never fully realize the impact of your actions this side of eternity, but rest assured, my friend, that God sees and he knows all. And he sees every act of faithfulness, every sacrifice made in obedience to his word, and he promised to reward it abundantly. So keep sowing those seeds of faith in obedience. Keep living right, treating people right. Keep trusting God and following his leading, even when it seems like your actions are so small and so insignificant. Because in the hands of a mighty God, even the smallest seed of faith can grow into something extraordinary, supernatural, bringing about transformation and blessings beyond anything you could ever imagine. Your obedience matters, so keep a shining light because the world is watching and needing somebody to light a pathway. Keep making a difference in the world around you. So from this powerful, powerful parable of the mustard seed, there are some amazing principles that we can extract, some great takeaways. And you'll find this in the handout that is below in the description box. Make sure you access that because it's full of notes and discovery questions that you can share, create your own Bible study out of it. I think it'll bless you. And there is a seven-day devotional where we'll be praying the same prayer, reading the same verse for the next seven days. So join me in that by making sure that you go and download the free PDF. So let me share with you a profound truth that we learn from this mighty parable of the mustard seed. And that is size doesn't matter. It's not about the size of your faith. It's about the object of your faith, which is God himself. Again, it's not about the size of your faith. It's about the object of your faith, which is God himself. You see, faith is all about trusting in the one who is forever faithful and true. That's our Heavenly Father who loves us unconditionally, and He alone has the power to move mountains on our behalf. That's why we ought to trust in Him. You know, so often we all get caught up in trying to measure the strength of our faith, you know, thinking that if we just had a little more faith, a little more faith, we could accomplish a few more things. But the truth is, it's not about how much faith we have. It's about who our faith is in. And when we fix our eyes on Jesus, friends, when we fix our eyes on the Lord, when we trust in God, when we placed our trust in his promises and in his character, listen, that's when we begin to see the miraculous happen in our lives. It's not about our abilities or our efforts. Salvation isn't even about our abilities or our efforts. We're saved by grace through faith that not of works lest any man should boast. It's about God's power working in and through us. So don't you dare doubt the power of your faith, my friends whether it's as small as a mustard seed or as big as a mountain. When your faith is anchored in God, there's nothing that can stand against you. So keep your eyes fixed on him. 
keep trusting in his goodness and trusting in his faithfulness and watch as he moves mountains in your life. Because again, I said it before, I'm going to say it again. Your best days, not behind you, they're yet ahead of you, my friend. And God has amazing things in store for you. Another great takeaway from this parable of the mustard seed is God's kingdom grows. Now, let me just impart to you a profound revelation about the essence of faith. It's not about the magnitude of our faith. Rather, it's about where our faith is anchored. None other than in God himself. You see, faith isn't about striving to conjure up enough belief through our own efforts. It's about trusting ourselves to the one who is steadfast and true, our heavenly father who loves us unconditionally and possesses the power to accomplish the impossible on our behalf. Because too often, we find ourselves fixated on measuring the strength of our faith, believing that if we only had a little bit more faith, a little greater faith, we could achieve greater feats. Greater faith, greater feats. It's not the quantity of our faith that matters, but the quality of our relationship with the one in whom we place our faith. That is, in God. So when we get our gaze upon God and is set upon God, our eyes are set upon God, when we can rest our confidence in his promises and his character, that's when we witness the miraculous unfolding in our lives. It's not about our abilities or our exertions. It's about the omnipotent work of God operating within us and operating through us. So I want to urge you, my friend, never underestimate the potency of your faith, whether it resembles that modest little mustard seed or towers as a majestic mountain. When your faith finds its anchor in God, there is no obstacle too formidable to overcome. So keep your eyes steadfastly fixed on him and continue to rely upon him and his goodness and his faithfulness. And behold, as he effortlessly moves mountains in your life, because let me say it one more time, your brightest days are ahead of you. God has unparalleled blessings in store for you. We also have another takeaway, and that is that faith is active. And this is a powerful truth about authentic faith, because true faith isn't merely a passive belief. It's a vibrant, dynamic force that springs into action. It's about stepping out in obedience and placing our complete trust in God's unfailing promises and unwavering faithfulness. You see, faith isn't just a concept to be pondered or feeling to be experienced, because you won't always feel like having faith. It's a lived experience. It's an active experience intentional choice to walk in obedience to God's word and to align ourselves with his will. It's about embracing his plans and purposes for us with unwavering confidence, knowing that he is faithful to fulfill every promise he has made. And too often we may find ourselves waiting for the perfect conditions or the right time and before we take a step of faith But let me encourage you to seize every opportunity to demonstrate your faith through your actions, whether it's extending a helping hand to someone in need or stepping out to encourage a person who needs some strength, or even pursuing your own dreams or simply obeying God's word in the small things. Every act of obedience is a testimony of your trust in God's sovereignty. And here's the beautiful thing about faith as I close. The more we exercise it, the stronger it becomes. And just as a muscle grows stronger with each workout, our faith grows stronger and matures as we continue to walk in obedience and trust in God. So don't hold back. Step forward. Trust God in faith. Because at the end of the day, size doesn't matter. 
I hope you got something out of this Bible study. I'm so excited to bring you God's word. Thank you for being there with me. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Make sure you download the free PDF and pray with me for the next seven days. Read the word with me for the next seven days. This is Bishop Littman. I love you. And until next time, you go with God. Thank you.